Hi everybody, welcome to my third video on shear stress and shear strain. Now if you remember, in the last video, we talked about normal stress and strain. And basically, in normal stress and strain, we applied loads, you know, normal to the surface, so like this. In shear stress, we apply loads tangential, so like pulling this. Alright, so let's just, you know, get down a diagram so we can get some mathematical definitions of this. So a box should do well for our purposes. Alright, we'll get 3D. Alright, and it's on some sort of surface. It could be a table or whatever, something like that. And of course it has some dimensions. Let's just call it its height H and its upper area here. Let's call that A. And we're pulling on it, shearing it with a force V. Alright, any applied shear force we give it a V, just like any applied normal force, like we've seen in the last normal the other video, it's N. Alright, and we define shear stress as tau is equal to V over A. All right, nice and simple. Just like normal force or normal stress, it's sigma equals N over A. All right, now, that's our stress. Now I want to go into strain, all right? So let's take the same box draw it again down here, and I want to only draw the cross section here, okay, and of course, you know, all the same, still has a height H, and we're still shearing it with a force V, okay, now, what is this box going to do in reaction to this? It's going to deform, but how is it going to deform, all right? So let's get some help here from uh, Isaac Asimov in, uh, oh wait, his book. Great book, you should read it. But anyway, he's not going to really help us, but his book is good. So I take my thumbs, my fingers, and I shear this book. Watch what happens to this piece here. All right, that's exactly the same as what we're doing here. All right, we're shearing this, we're pulling it across the top while the bottom remains fixed. So I'm fixing the bottom with my fingers, and I'm shearing the top with my thumbs. There we go. Boom. The whole thing kind of stretches like that on an angle, you see? One more time here. Boom. All right. So that's exactly what's going to happen to our box here. Kind of get some sort of this sort of profile like that. All right. And we can give these new dimensions some names here. Delta. Remember that one. And a new one here we call the angle gamma. Now gamma is our strain, okay? So gamma, we define tangent of gamma to be delta over h. Now, tangent over strain is delta over h. Well, that's kind of a norm. We don't want the tangent in there. But we know that for small values of gamma, like it's going to be most of the time in engineering applications. You don't want your building to move this much. It's probably only going to move a few millimeters. It's approximately equal to gamma. You can try this on your calculator. You know, try tangent of 0.1. It's close to 0.1. Tangent of 0.001. It's even closer to 0.001. All right. So then we can write gamma is equal to delta over h. All right. And this here is our shear strain, all right? And it's kind of the same as uh, normal strain in that that doesn't have any units, but this one has like, you can kind of think of it physically because it's actually an angle, okay? Now, the units of stress and strain are the exactly the same as they were before, right? We have a force over area, newtons per meter squared. Just write that down. And here for strain, we have distance over distance, no units. 
just the same as it used to be. All right, so that's shear stress, shear strain. Now, just like we did for normal stress and strain, you know, we can take it to a lab and you know, pull on this book and then like plot the results. Okay, there we go. This would be our shear stress tau and shear strain gamma. And we get the same sort of linear fashion. All right, one, we'll call it a G. It's not called Young's modulus anymore, it's just like you call it a shear modulus. And it's G equal to rise over run, tau over gamma. Okay, there we go. So that's the shear modulus. Alright, now this is important in later on when we go into something called torsional bars. Alright, so that's basically when you take a bar and you like twist it. Alright, and that has to do with, you know, the shear modulus. Um, if you wanted, you could take like, you know, tau is actually equal to this. Gamma is actually equal to this. You could plug it in like we did before, but I've never seen that before, so I'm not going to spend the time doing that. Instead, let's just do a quick example here. So let's just say you have, you know, a table, right? And on top of that table, you have a piece of metal like this, and you've got it bolted to the table, right? Just like that. And this piece here has a cross-sectional area A, so you can imagine this kind of circular piece of the bolt here kind of looks like this, you know. It's got an area A. Okay, and of course we're pulling on this with a force P. We want to figure out if the maximum allowable, so tau max for the bolt, is right there, is 50 MPa. You know, what is the allowable load P, all right? So P max. So how much force can we pull on this before this bolt will shear off? And now it'll shear off at 50 MPa. All right, so this is kind of a common question you can get to do a shear. You know, it's kind of basic, but let's just go through it just to get you guys acquainted with this. So, just like we did before, we need to make a free body diagram. We need to find the internal forces, so we need to make a cut. So let's just cut right down this seam here between the counter and the, you know, the bar that's on top. And we'll do a free body diagram of the bar. Okay. Free body diagram. Boom. Okay. Here's the piece that we cut. This is drawn a little jaggedy so you can see it. The bolt is still on top here. We have our applied force, P, and of course we have a resisting force. Now here, the resisting force is going to be shear. All right, shear force V. It's going to be resisting and shear. And like always, don't forget to draw the directions. And we sum up the forces in the x to be zero. So just at the point where it shears, the whole thing's gonna balance. Okay? So then V equals P. Alright, pretty straightforward. So in order to figure out the shear stress on this bolt now, we know that tau, let's just quote this equation, equals V over A. Alright. So this is what I do when I quote an equation, I put these little quotation marks around just to show that, you know, I'm just quoting the equation. Now I can write tau max is equal to V. Well, we don't know what V is, but we know that V equals to P. All right? So we're to replace that P. And when we have tau max, we're also going to have P max. All right? The maximum shear stress occurs. When that's occurring, that means we must have had you know, we must have a maximum load 
pulling when the maximum shear stress is happening all right over the area all right and let's just say the area of the bolt just to make it easy is 0.1 meters squared pretty huge i know but it works out really nicely all right now we can just rearrange this equation t max so tau j tau max was 50 mpa so when i solve the equations i personally like to put everything in terms of the fundamental units i like to keep the mega and the giga and the millimeters you know all that stuff out and just put it in terms of newtons and meters you know just like the very fundamental basic units all right times the area well that was 0.1 right meter squared for p max well it's basically this divided by 10 is 50 or 10 to the 5 newtons so this is the right answer but now that we've done the calculations, whoops, sorry, now that we've done the calculations, you want to take it out of, you know, Newtons and put it back into something that we can understand. So, P max is equal to 5 mega Newtons. All right, because decimals here, you move it one over, you increase this to a 6. Anything times 10 to the 6 is mega. So in this case, it's five mega newtons. All right, just to recap. So we define shear stress to be the applied shear force over the area. You see here, the shear strain is an angle, which is defined for small angles as delta over H. We define a shear modulus by plotting shear stress versus strain as G is tau over gamma, and we went through a quick example, you know, solving for shear stress in bolts. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video where we will start axial bars.